My name is Rick Bauer, and I am a digital strategist MVP with a proficient Sitecore practice. Welcome to episode four of the Sitecordial video channel, designed to help marketers visualize the power of Sitecore experience marketing. This series was designed to be progressive training, building off best practices in order on the Sitecore Experience Platform version 8. If you have not seen the earlier episodes on taxonomy, goals, engagement value, and campaigns, I recommend you start from the beginning. This episode is focused on setting up A-B and multivariate tests. With this episode, we leave behind the crawl phase, and by now that phase should be yielding some quality reporting information. You should see your engagement value line springing to life in your analytics dashboard. And with facets and campaigns in place, you should also be seeing value reporting around those definitions. These important first steps will now help you visualize some key pages on which to test and in some cases can define those pages. Engagement value will help you see pages that are yielding higher value but could be improved and are easily visualized on the path analyzer, which I will cover in detail in a future episode. So your hard work is paid off and now you can begin to employ a solid testing methodology to drive increased conversions through content testing. Before we dive into the mechanics of setting up a test, we as marketers have some work to do. We need a testing hypothesis and have some measurement considerations to get down on paper or a spreadsheet. For now, let's start simple and set up an A-B test. With A-B testing understood, adding multivariate is relatively easy. Step one is to identify the test. Why are we testing? What is the objective and our anticipated outcome? Putting some sort of anticipated value or KPI around the test content will not only give you tangible metrics, but it will help you improve your testing skills. Where are you running your test? Going back to what I said earlier, with engagement value and campaigns already running for a while, you should be able to see high value pages, but also probably have some campaign landing pages. Besides those two options, consider high traffic and key decision pages as strong starting candidates. From there, you will want to start to execute your content and determine the details of your test. Please make sure your content variates are significantly unique versus your original content in both A-B and multivariate testing. I will come back to measurement after we have set up a test, but first, a few technical assumptions we should consider. Do you have workflow set up and have you determined which users will be responsible for running the test? There is an accept and test operation that should be assigned to your analytics advanced testing or analytics testing roles. More on role configuration in future episodes, but for now, work with your development partner to make sure this is set up properly. By this point in the series, I am hoping the other basics of a component-based architecture, goals and engagement value, are all solid and in place, and we'll start testing at a component level and save page level tests for a future episode. Once you have your hypothesis in place and you have started to fill out your tracking spreadsheet, it is time to create the content for your component test. It is very likely that you have at least the A content for your AB test because it is probably the default content that is currently displayed on the page. While you can create the B content in the experience editor, it has been a long time preference of mine to build the extra content first in the content editor. This is a preference, but if you're used to working in the content tree, it is a little faster and there is no waiting for the page to render. In this case, navigate to the content editor. Here you'll need to open up the tree and get to the component you want to test. Right click on the component and click duplicate. Rename the new version by right clicking choosing rename and providing a relative description. Click OK. Keep in mind, you would repeat this for multivariate tests. As an example, if you had four different percent off versions you wanted to test, you would duplicate the default component three times, provide the correct names, and of course, edit the content fields with the different content. Once you have all of the content fields and components created, make sure you save and publish them. One advantage of creating new content in the experience editor is you would not need to know ahead of time where to find the content you want to edit. But I promise once you're done here, you will see that it is quicker to build your test with the content already waiting for you. With your new content created and published, it is time to create the test. If you are logged in as an admin, please log out and log in as a content author. Admin roles will typically not have the ability to easily trigger the testing dialog. Once logged back in, open the Experience Editor and click the View tab and let's make sure some of these preferences are checked. In the Show section, click the navigation bar, which allows you to easily traverse your site while in edit mode. Go to the page containing the component you want to edit. In the warning bar, 
Click Lock and Edit, or if that's not showing, the word More, to expand and select Lock and Edit. Return to the View tab and click Associated Content if you want to highlight content that is used in multiple locations. This is good to know if you plan to change that content. Click Control Bar if you want to add more functionality to the Floating Toolkit. This is particularly helpful in testing and personalization. And click Controls if you want to highlight component control hints, which will certainly help you get to know the hierarchy of your site components better over time. Under the Enable section, make sure only Designing is checked. Having both Editing and Designing checked at the same time can be confusing. For the most part, you will want to only have Design checked when setting up tests and personalization, especially if you have pre-built your content in the Content Editor. If you did choose to build content in the Experience Editor, you will need to toggle between these two settings. With all these preferences set, you can define the test. To do so, click on the component you want to test. In this case, I will select this page title and create a test with an incentive. Click on the Dual Pages icon to launch the test dialog. Here you will see the default or original component and content. To create an A-B test, click on the New Variation button and type a clear name for the version. There are three ways we can run an A-B component test. One, we can show versus hide the content by simply clicking Hide Component on the variation. Two, we can display a completely different component, say a poll or form, instead of a copy block. Do this by clicking Enable Variation of Component Design. By clicking, you will see a component dialog open up, which will give you the opportunity to click this button to select a rendering. Hopefully you will see helpful reference thumbnails like these to be able to quickly choose the right replacement component. They should also be set up to only display components that will work in the same place in the site as the one you are testing against. For now, I'm going to cancel out of here and deselect the component variation checkbox, as we are going to simply focus on a content A-B test. To select the different content, click this button to open the content window. A well set up Sitecore instance will deliver you to the correct folder for your associated content instead of the top of the tree like my demo does. In any case, I can navigate the tree to find the test content I created earlier in the content editor. With the proper role authority, it is in this dialog where I could create or duplicate existing content from inside the experience editor. Since we already did build the content, I simply select and click OK. You can imagine that if you were doing a multivariate test that having the content already created would certainly expedite this part of the process. Speaking of multivariate, to go beyond a simple A-B component test by adding a new third, fourth, or fifth variation, this becomes multivariate on the one component. Or by running A-B tests, and multivariate tests for that matter, on multiple components on a page, is by definition multivariate. Happily, Sitecore will help you manage the details. A quick note about this action button. This is where you can rename or delete this test level, but since I am set with this, I will just click OK. I also suggest here that we save the page. With the control bar checked in the View tab, you will now see a different look in the floating toolbar. Click the arrows next to the A or the drop-down where it says Original to scroll through the versions for both AB and multivariate. You can see the changes visually in line in the Experience Editor. This is very powerful when you consider changing creative such as images and design to see how the content looks in context with the rest of the page. Depending on your workflow settings, you may need to move your test from draft to review and wait for approval. Because this workflow can vary, please work with your development partner to determine the best workflow to meet your governance needs. Ultimately, you or your test approver will see an option to test or approve with test, which opens this test dialog window. Make sure to navigate across all the tabs for a complete setup. Tab 1 allows you to preview thumbnails of the different versions of components and choose your anticipated effect on the changes. In this case, I will choose an improved outcome. This setting will show up in the Experience Optimization Report to show each tester's ability to guess outcomes. In the Variables tab, it is very important that you deselect the components you do not want to include in the test. For one thing, the effect prediction that you just selected will be based on all combinations unless you uncheck the other possible tests on the page. By unchecking, you place focus on the one component you are working on. Leaving more checked constitutes a multivariate test, 
and you will see that reflected in the experience created information. Slide the percentage slider if you do not want everyone exposed to this test. Keep in mind if you have a single A-B test set on the page and the slider is set to 100%, then 50% of your traffic to this page component will see version A and 50% will see version B. If you have 90% selected, for example, 90% will be exposed to one of the variations while the remaining 10% will only see version A. Choose your confidence level. Think of this like a margin of error. If you want your test to be based on a 1% margin of error, choose 99%. If you work off of a 5% margin of error, choose 95%. 10% choose 90. This will make sure enough statistical data is present to determine a winner. 95% is the default. Play around with these settings and note how it affects the experience created information. Finally, the objective tab. Here is where those goals and engagement value score settings pay off because you can now define the effectiveness of your test based on a goal. Click the test objective dropdown and choose your goal. You can select trailing value slash visit, the engagement value based on page views occurring after the visitor has encountered the page being tested, divided by the number of site visits, or any one of the goals that have been set up in the marketing control panel. In the select how to pick a winner field, specify the method for selecting the winner of the test. Automatically select the winner based on the test objective. This is the default if the test objective is trailing value slash visit. Automatically select a winner based on the test objective unless it significantly decreases engagement value. This is the default for objectives that are goals, and you cannot select them for the trailing value slash visit objective. When you do select this option, no winner is declared if the best experience based on the goal has decreased the trailing value visit by more than 20%. Instead, the test continues. And finally, manually select a winner. The user who created a test can select an experience in the test results dialog box and declare the experience as the winner of the test. When you choose a winner, consider the effect that the test had on the overall engagement value generated on the website. In the duration of the test section, specify the minimum and maximum time for the test to run. Minimum, select 3, 7, or 14 days. Maximum, Select 14, 30, or 90 days. And now, starting the test. Note that after you start a test, you cannot modify it. For example, you cannot add or edit the test variations or the components that you're using in the test. To start a test, in the Preview and Start Test dialog box, click Start Test. To publish the test to your website, you must perform a site publish using the Publish Wizard. This makes the test go live. Open the Publish Wizard, and select Smart Publish. When your test is running, you will notice a red dot indicated on the Optimization tab. And after the test has been running for a while, click on the Test Result icon to open up the Interactive Test Results dialog. This dialog allows the ability to click through different tests to quickly visualize results of different component versions. Selecting an individual version will provide metrics like trailing value per visit compared to default, value per visit after the visitor has been exposed to the select test variant, top goals completed, top clicks to page, general site usage stats, and reach, which quickly shows the number of visitors sent to the selected experience. You can also choose to cancel the test or pick the winner from within this dialog. It is important to note that value is based on having set up engagement value score across your site, so you can start to see the importance of having a rich set of goals and several goal workshops under your belt. By making sure you have your engagement values properly set to match your business, you will see more accurate testing results based on what matters most to you and your team. Once you have set up a few tests, it will be easy to create and reuse content with slight changes to try to drive conversion and higher value click-through. Where you see success from one test, try to apply the same hypothesis to others and repeat. Keep it simple and start with A-B testing to show value and align your stakeholders. As comfort grows and if site traffic allows, add in some multivariate tests and let Sitecore do the heavy lifting on determining the winner. Over time, you will see uplift in clicks in Sitecore Analytics, but I also recommend you capture data in a quick reference spreadsheet. Join me in future video episodes where we will look at page testing, the path analyzer, and rules-based personalization, just to name a few topics. Thank you for your time, and I hope this helps move you forward in your experience marketing journey please reach out or share any ideas or questions. As always, I'd love to hear from you.